Hello, all my love bugs. Chantal, hi, Candace Eating Coach. And welcome to my special group, Speed Dating with Chantal Hyde. I want to say hello to all my watchers, say hello to all my listeners, because we will be rebroadcasting this as a podcast. Um, so for those of you who don't know, because uh, some of you are kind of seeing me for the first time, uh, I am your dating coach. I am a sociologist, I'm a behaviorist, I study sociology, psychology, anthropology, biology, I devour this stuff. My passion is guiding you into the relationship you want and from there helping you make it work because listen, getting into a relationship, it's kind of the easiest part. It's really leaning in and making it work that kind of really takes a lot of effort. So wherever you're at single and looking or just getting in a relationship or in a relationship and it's, it's ah, there's so much struggle. I'm your Sherpa, my, my people. I am your Sherpa. My burden that I carry for you is a burden of knowledge so you don't have to deal with that. You can just gain the insight from me on how to find the right partner, which is half the battle, and then making it work with them, which is the other half. But today we are talking about this no kissing for three months rule. And I put an announcement on, on the, out on the page and I wanted to hear from you. I wanted to know what your opinion was about this. And I especially wanted to hear from someone who disagreed with me. Now, Chris popped up and he said, I'm in for this conversation. And I don't know at all. I have no clue what his thoughts are about this, what his opinion is about this. We are going to have an entirely fresh conversation because I want you to witness this. I want you to understand where this rule comes from. And I want you to understand how people will generally react to it. I think um, maybe Chris will be sort of one of our general people. We shall see. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to start seeing if, oh, he is here. So I'm adding Chris in, see, adding, adding, adding. Um, I want to let you guys know while we're waiting for Chris that I will be coming up on this page regularly. Hey, Chris. And hey, I want to, hi, I want to invite you all to ask questions and participate. Chris, I'm so excited to see you. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you for having me. Yay. Okay. So I don't know if you were listening to the little intro, but I was saying how I really wanted to have a conversation with somebody about this no kissing for three months rule. And I put it out on the page and you popped up and said, I want to talk about this. Um, so let's do that. Let's un unpackage this. And I really want to get your opinion and your thoughts about this rule. So just a beginner question. How much have you looked into my content in terms of videos or blog posts or anywhere where I talk about this rule? I've skimmed since uh, I first saw it come up. I, uh, I thought it was interesting for sure. And the, probably the most in-depth I got into was your article you wrote about um, your exes and how you thought certain behavior was normal until you learned that it wasn't and applying that rule in your life. Right. So what were your thoughts when you were reading this? Well, I had a few. Um, the first thing is just looking at it from a man's perspective, what would worry me about that was the feeling that your current partner that you were dating was paying for the sins of another man before him. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So you're applying, you're applying these rules to someone thinking, well, this happened to me before, so I'm never going to let that happen again. So now you have to meet this standard. Right. Got it. And that can just get someone a little bit back on their heels. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I love that you say paying for the sins of another man, um, because a lot of people definitely do that. Um, and, and the way that I phrase that is vomiting. It's, it's taking your past experiences, your past hurts and not dealing with them before going into your 
future. So in essence, yeah. as you meet new people, you just keep vomiting your past onto them, which I agree 100% absolutely isn't fair. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's always important to learn from, I mean, we all learn when we go through relationships, we learn things and we say to ourselves, I'm never going to do that again. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I think it's, it's really the only way to be, you're not going to, you don't, you're, if you don't learn from your mistakes, you're doomed to repeat them, as they say. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, I, it's important to approach each individual relationship as sort of a fresh start. And yeah. uh, not carry too too much baggage from the previous one or several in with you <laughs> uh i you know i kind of feel like you and i are kind of in the same age range um and it feels like a big ask for you know to say to someone don't don't bring any baggage with you or don't bring too much baggage sure. with you. <laughs> and that's why i'm a behaviorist and that is why in all of my work that I do, step one is meditation. Because what that does is shrink the part of your brain that's called the amygdala, which is where your fight or flight comes from. And that's your stress, right. anxiety, fear, and anger. And by physically reducing the, the size of that part of your brain, you physically reduce your capacity to feel those emotions. And that reduces how much you will vomit your past into your future because you're not stressing out as much. You're not being as reactive or feeling as anxious. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. That's yeah. really important. Yeah, wishful thinking will not get you anywhere. It's a change in behaviors that create that different outcome. So, you know, having a traumatic relationship history and then hoping that you're not going to drag that along with you isn't going to keep you from dragging it with you. What you have to do is, is go, okay, what am I gonna do proactively? to make sure that I don't vomit on the next person. And that's where meditation comes in. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree with meditation 100% from coming from the, the fitness world. I always tell people to meditate as well for different reasons, but they all sort of bring us to the same place. Yeah. So you meditate as well. I do. I have uh, the Headspace app and uh, I try and take at least 10 minutes a day yeah. and just sort of it's something that I knew the importance of for a long time before I actually started putting it to practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Headspace is a great app. I know a lot of people use it uh, for um, people who want maybe a little bit more, something different. I don't know. Uh, I have a YouTube channel um, because meditation is part of everything that I teach. One of my playlists is called Let's Meditate, and I have a bunch of meditation tracks on there. And one of them, or not one of them, but one of the, the category of tracks is binaural beats. And, I ha and basically what binaural beats is, is when you go into meditative state, your brain switches brain waves. It goes into an alpha brain wave state. Binaural beats create frequencies inside your head that pull your brain into that meditative frequency faster. It makes it much more efficient. If you listen to the stuff on my playlist by Rich Pendlebury and Chris mm -hmm. Gibbs, Rich Pendlebury try, it might just blow your mind because he makes incredible meditation tracks that are super efficient because they do pull your brain into that space faster. But I don't want to get off track. I want to go back to this no kissing for three months rule. I want to ask you, when you were browsing through all this and, and sort of forming your thoughts about it, did you read up on the science? I did not. I sort of, uh, I looked at it mostly from a man's perspective and from somewhat of a scientific scientific perspective that I know of right and where I really you might be shocked I absolutely agree with it I think it's a great thing to to put into practice with the no kissing for three months rule yes I do okay so help me help me combine this inside my head because when you first started a conversation um, you felt like it was a rule that was a vomit. Or, like, or, or maybe be... someone pay for your, the sins of the past. Right. So I would say that is in the framing. Right. Okay, yes. so I always said it's important in dating and in anywhere to, for a man to maintain frame. Yeah. Okay, so let's imagine that, uh, you know, you and I meet and we're going to go out for our first date. And I say to you, Chantel, 
I have a rule that I won't spend any more than $100 on any given date for the first month. It's just a rule of mine. I just want to make sure that I'm not meeting someone who wants to use me for my money. Mm -hmm. right, that's immediately going to sort of put you back a little bit and say, well, I wasn't trying to do that to you. I mean, why would you assume that? Why would you hit me with a rule? But if I were to present it in a way that said, Chantal, you know, I'd really like us for the first little while to uh, sort of go on a, a date that's inexpensive. Let's find something to do that's really fun. It doesn't cost a whole lot of money, so we can just enjoy each other's company and enjoy the simple things, you know, walk by the river or, you know, anything that we can do that we're not spending a ton of money. And you notice I said we, not I. Yeah. Not spending a ton of money. And, uh, you know, then I can, we can enjoy each other's company and not get caught up in how extravagant the date is. Well, that puts a whole different type of spin on that. Okay, so if we apply it to your no kissing rule, yeah. okay, when you present it as a rule, right, if you say, I have a rule that I won't kiss for the first three months, yeah. I would say to the man, don't let yourself be told that it's a rule, say it's something that we are going to do. You know, we are going to wait for three months. Right. You know, we really like each other and we've decided, we've talked about it, we've decided that we are going to wait for three months before we kiss. And that just has a total different feel to it where you're, you're both on the same level, you're both uh, on the same page in terms of what you're doing and why you're doing it. Yeah. You know, no man wants to be that little puppy that's looking up and begging for that treat. So just sort of have that different frame to the conversation where you understand what you're doing and why you're doing it and you're both doing it together rather than one person saying i have a rule so no kissing for you i love Make sense yeah. oh my god like like i'm wondering like you're saying everything you're saying and i'm like are you sure you haven't read all of my stuff because <laughs> you are echoing exactly what i say um, 100% right down to how you should date, right down to how you should have those first dates. I, my rule for, for, for a first date, that first date, you have one question to answer. That question is, do I want to see this person again? It should mm -hmm. not cost money or significant money to answer that one super, super simple question. And so I Absolutely. always say a first date should be a walking date. I love it. You I and I, it. Chris, you and I, Chris, totally on the same page. And Absolutely. how do you communicate the no kissing thing? Again, you want to come across as somebody who is simply controlling themselves and nobody else. And mm -hmm. the way that you stated it is exactly the way that I want people. And I, I generally work with women, but I, since I started all this, one of the surprise effects has been the men who are leaning into my work, reading my books, watching my videos going, I completely agree with this and themselves introducing no kissing for three months on dates so that they can slow the pace down and make sure they're taking their time to get to know somebody. And one thing that I say to women is men will take sex when it's put on the table because they're designed to. Your fertility cycle is on 24 seven, ours shuts off. So right. you might say no to sex. You personally, but generally when women are, you know, <laughs> I don't want to say pushy. That's the word I'm, I'm, ref I'm not wanting to say, right? But when women are pushing sex, more often than not, the man who wants a relationship will end up going, all right, but then if it's too early for him to decide to commit, before having sex, it kind of shifts things for him. And he's like, well, that was fun, but I'm still looking for the woman to have a relationship with. Because men who are generous long-term thinkers, who are working hard, who are creating their empire, don't want, that's their mindset, is I know that in order to achieve something, it takes dedicated action over a long period of time, and I'm willing to lean in and do the work. And a woman who puts that on the table is matching his mindset. And he goes, oh, I get time to tick off my mental checklist and make sure that you're the right one for me before you're pushing me to make a commitment. That sounds good to me. Yeah, absolutely. And, and what you're doing, you want to tap into a man's thinking and a man's desires when you're doing this. So 
the idea of delayed gratification, which is what we're talking about, is very, very important in every other facet of life. Yes. Right? So if you look at uh, fitness, my area, you, your instant gratification would be to sleep in and say, I'll go to the gym tomorrow. But if you sacrifice now, it's going to pay off down the road, right? You get up and go to the gym, it's going to pay off. Finances, if you have $500, you can spend it and have that instant gratification. But if you say, I'll save it, it's going to be worth $8,000 one day, right. right? So why wouldn't that same aspect of delayed gratification apply here? And it absolutely does. 100%. Where yeah. it's important to be mindful is a man's fears as well. So we've got a few different fears as guys. We, we don't want to feel that it's just our turn. Okay, when it comes to dating a woman, we all want to you, man, that it's not just our turn. We weren't just the latest in line. Okay. Also, two really big fears in dating is that uh, we're going to be rejected and we're going to be put in the friend zone. Yes. Yeah. And right? I, I, so if you are implementing the no kissing rule, You've got to really be smart with your communication as to why you're doing it. And everything else has to be there yes. just to make sure that that man's not going to, you know, cause our, our instant, um, we've all been there and it's really humiliating when it happens when we get friend zoned or rejected and nobody wants that. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and this is why I stress the importance of touch throughout this process from the very beginning. Like when she is, introducing this concept i say have a conversation instead of a kiss so you know don't you don't necessarily need to have this conversation if you don't know whether or not you want to kiss each other yet but when she's thinking i want to kiss him and i know he wants to kiss me and culture says that we should kiss to see where it goes then my instruction to her is instead of that kiss you have the conversation but when you have the conversation you say, this is what I'm doing to make sure I'm choosing the right partner. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. You are absolutely free to do what you want. And I have her do this because I want her to, you know, it's, it's the butterfly concept, right? If you crush it, then you it's not staying because it wants to. And so you don't clench in on him. You let him know, I like you. I do want to see where this goes. Touch, touch, touch because she wants to kiss him by that point. That's why she's having the conversation. So she's gonna communicate what she's feeling, not just with her words, not just by saying, I like you, I wanna see where this goes, but by touching him at the same time, it really communicates that like, it really communicates that intent and that desire to fully explore this and not hold anything back except for the kiss that confuses the process. Yeah, and something you said there that really stood out and I think will go a really long way is that you communicated that desire that you wanted to kiss him, right? That is going to be absolutely huge in a man's mind because then he feels desired. But you're yes. just saying, I really want to, but I think we should wait and because yeah. it's going to be so much more valuable when it does happen. So having that communication there and the touch, like you say, is just going to make all the difference in the world because that man will now feel desired and feel valued by that woman. Yeah. And I do say no kissing doesn't mean no affection. Affection sure. is important throughout this three month process from the very beginning, from the moment you exchange the conversation for a kiss. You know, at that point, if not before, the touch, the affection should be happening because that nonverbal communication goes straight into him and lets him know you are committed to the exploration phase. You're just not committing your body to that yet, but you're gonna commit your mind, you're gonna commit your intent, you're gonna commit your behaviors, and you're gonna let time tell whether or not compatibility actually follows through with that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, I think one thing I would say to the men out there is what you should do is apply. So another fear is that there's a woman's going to have different standards for different men. Mm. Right. So it's something we've all experienced when somebody really want a boyfriend right now. 
But then a guy comes along and they're together just like that. And right. you're standing there going, but you didn't want a boyfriend. What's going on? Yeah. So what I always say to men is that you should apply the Brad Pitt test. Now I use Brad Pitt because he's my generation's, probably our generation's heartthrob. But you can insert any name you want of a, a high value, very desired man. Okay, so if a girl is communicating to you that we're not going to kiss. So the big one I use is just when someone says I'm too busy. You know, if you say, let's get together, let's do something, or I want to talk for a little while, I'm too busy. Okay, well, if you take yourself out and put Brad Pitt, would she be too busy, busy for Brad Pitt? Right. If the answer is no, and you're being held to a different standard, then that's going to tell you something. Right. But if you can honestly tell yourself that, yes, if it were Brad Pitt or me or anyone else, she would be the same way, then you're fine. Good point by you. Yeah. Perspective is absolutely everything. Grounding yourself in reality makes a huge difference. And questioning your own thoughts, because you're right. Um, we, we, you know, we can become consumed with somebody entirely different while going through this process with someone. And that's kind of, it's, it's sort of the, you know, it's, it's a bonus, it's a pitfall at the same time, right? Um, the bonus is that you didn't commit to someone that maybe you, you shouldn't have, right? Because when we kiss to see where it goes, the chemicals that happen inside our body, the introduction of phenylethylamine, which is the chemical created during a kiss. So everybody's lip secretes a chemical that doesn't do anything to them till their lips come in contact with another set of lips. The combination that it creates is phenylethylamine, which is an aphrodisiac. This is why kissing precedes sex. But the secondary effect in the female brain, not the male brain, is telling her that she has done a vetting period, observed males putting on a display. So think mammals, which we are one of, right? Mm -hmm. And so in the mammal world, you know, the males do the fighting or the, you know, they, 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 do, they do what they do depending on the species to, to show the female that I'm the best mate for you. The females observe these displays and then select the best one for themselves. Phenylethylamine in our human body tells us we've completed that vetting process, shuts down the red flag alert, makes us say no to anybody else who wants to ask us out, right? Because it tells us we selected that mate, even if we kissed on the first, second, or third date, which means we committed to a stranger. And so having this no kissing for three months rule means that if that person in front of you, for whatever reason, fades off, um, maybe they took themselves out of the equation. Maybe someone else came along for you that was more interesting, that felt more compatible, that there was just more of a synergy with them. And yes, there always is that risk that the person who is putting it on the table or the person who, who accepts that because of the person who is putting it on the table that they want to date, they want to see where this goes with. There's always that possibility that there will be a fork in the road. But with this tactic, the whole idea is making sure that you ultimately choose somebody that over the course of the three month period, the chemistry that was there when you wanted to have that kiss in the beginning only grew. The appreciation that you had for them and you thought, wow, I want to see where this goes because they seem such a great person. They've just become so much better in your mind because of all the insights that you're gaining because you know what happens when you're not kissing? You're talking. You're getting to know each other. You're learning a lot about each other. And it, it keeps you from getting foggy because no kissing also means no sleepovers. So at the end of the day, when we, when we gain some distance from each other and we start reflecting on how that day went, on how those communications went, if there was a red flag that popped up that was shifted to the back of our minds because the next moment happened really quickly, when we say goodbye, or as I say, you know, sometimes you got to say, okay, you got to go now, <laughs> because sometimes we're having such a great time, we just don't want to say goodbye. But that rule, the no kissing, no sleepover rule for three months makes you do that, makes you have a shift in behavior from how you were approaching other relationships. So you have time and space to think about the other person. And another bonus about this 
is you're carving yourselves into each other's brain. And I say to my people, I don't want you to be with somebody who hasn't carved you in their brain. I want you to be with somebody who thought about you so much that they were like, you know, when am I going to see them again? How am I going to plan this day? What am I going to do for them? How am I going to make them happy? What are they going to say that's going to help me figure out how long term I can make them happy? I want all this to happen during those three months. And if they don't, then maybe that's not the person to commit to. Yeah, I would agree. And we all know, <laughs> we all know the feeling when somebody's not into us and when they are right? But we, we lie to ourselves. So I would say that removing that kissing aspect lessens the chances of us lying to ourselves, right? Because we would always fall back on that. So, you know, that part of the brain that controls that feeling when you say something just doesn't feel right. It doesn't, doesn't feel like she's as interested in me as I am in her. But when we kiss, it's magical. So you end up wiping all that, all those gut instincts away because that kiss was so amazing, right? So removing that would remove that chance of us lying to ourselves as much, right? And you right. could go just, just based on all those other things that you just talked about. If all of that is there, the kissing is just gonna be that, that sort of anticipation down the road that is, mm -hmm. will just be that icing on the cake type of deal. It's always, it's, it's the cherry on the sunny that seals the deal on something. Absolutely. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it's, I I love this, love this, love this. Um, now I noticed that we had a bunch of people coming on and watching and Melanie, um, what did Melanie say? Melanie has been doing the no, no kissing for three months rule. She said day 36 of no kissing here, which is really cool. And I love the feedback that I get from people because there's a theme, you know, basically what they're saying is I feel so much more relaxed. I feel like there's a lot of pressure that's been taken off. Um, so it really gives people time to sort of, you know, understand themselves as they go into this, as much as they're understanding the other person. Yeah, I, I, I think so too. And, and, and that'll give you time to sort of learn new things and value, value things about that other person where you can just sort of, really, really show that interest in who they are and what they bring to the table rather, rather than how well they kiss or how physically attractive they are, or how much they turn you on. Yeah. Yeah. And I like what you said about, um, you know, like how kissing can confuse you because, you know, you have that kiss and everything feels like very magical and cohesive and, and how you're saying you should have that feeling before the kiss. And this is definitely something that I felt with my husband we went so long before having our first kiss and that was me unintentionally doing the three month no kissing rule and then you know in, we've been together for 13 years and we've fought for eight years during that period we haven't had a fight in four years now because i started meditating and doing everything that i talk about in um let me just flash a book here uh so this is the book that i wrote for couples and this is uh it's called fix that Shit. And it's how you get, you know, with, with that person that you really, you feel fundamentally that it is so right. It just could be so right. And, and you can answer two questions. You can say yes to two questions, which I think are super important. Um, if you're on the fence, which is, is he a hardworking person? Because I want to know what the work ethic is. And does he make you laugh more than anybody else? Because if you have those two, you have a great foundation to build on. But we fought for eight years. We broke up twice. I did the no kissing for three months rule, we dated other people, did not kiss them. And still with my husband today because I didn't confuse myself. Um, but there was so many times where we weren't kissing because we were fighting. We were just so angry at each other. But we would, we would, we would still hold each other because we still loved each other. And you could just feel that the energy was absolutely harmonious and and these are the type of people because like like we've talked about before we bring baggage with us and and more often than not we will come into a relationship dysfunctional both people 
if mm -hmm. you can find the person that you feel that energetic harmony with and they are hardworking and they do make you laugh more than anybody else, then you can use behaviors to get beyond the dysfunction into what I call absolute magic, which is what my husband and I have. And, and, and it's incredible because here's what I love about you men. You are beautifully emotional. You are incredibly loving. And in fact, if we think you feel less than us, us women, we are dead wrong because there is a company in the UK that did some testing and they brought in men and women, separated them, attached them to lie detector tests, flashed mm -hmm. images before their eyes that were funny, exciting, blissful, or heartwarming, tested their emotional response, found men matched us when it came to funny, exciting, and blissful, but doubled their response when it came to heartwarming. So when we choose one of you, and when we create the sort of relationship that there is no fighting, your emotional safety means that your loving vibes increase so big that you keep catching us off guard. We, you know, in my relationship with my husband, I keep thinking, this is perfect. It couldn't get any better. I don't think my husband could love me more because he loves me so much. And next thing I know, he's leveling up because there hasn't been a fight in several months and he's deepening his appreciation even four years down the road, just to, to let you know how much men can grow in terms of how much they love us. Yeah, I agree with that. The, uh, the, it's, it's one of those things that there, there's, if you tap into those primal instincts men have, finding a beautiful woman is one of them. And, and we will go to, I mean, look at the stupid things men have done throughout time in the name of women you know we, we, we see that beautiful woman and we want her, we desire her so we will do anything to have her and then once we have her we will do anything to keep her mm -hmm. that's true that's true and in in the wrong hands you know and this is why i made a video um uh it's titled why do nice guys or girls finish last um in the wrong hands that can absolutely be abused which is a shame and i like to say not on my guard because I know that there are very many huge hearted people that are looking for the right person to love. Unfortunately, there are people out there who take advantage of that. Um, got some more comments. Melanie says, love the communication level we are at. This is just to take you back a little bit. This is uh, the lady who said uh, 36 days, no kissing here. Um, we actually talk instead of exercising hormones. Love that. Robin says, what do you say to men who are looking for the spark? What about that, Chris? What do you say to that? What is like, what should women say to men if they're saying, you know what, I'm really looking for that spark. What should, what should a woman reply to that? Well, I, I would reply probably right away is that absolutely. That's what I'm looking for too. And that's why we don't want to confuse it with, you know, kissing and sex too yeah. soon. Right. Um, that spark is very, very important. And it can yeah. be it can be conveyed in so many different ways. So just, you know, looking into his eyes is a huge thing. You know, making that eye contact, that's gonna really get into a man. Um, kissing on the cheek. Yes. You know, something like that. Or embracing or hugging. That little spark. Anything like that can provide that spark. Yes. What? Um, so Robin, let, let me answer that. Uh, so when you're, say you're sitting across with somebody and you're saying, I like you, I want to see where this goes, but I don't kiss anybody I don't know because I don't want to commit to a stranger. There's a chemical that's exchanged during a kiss called phenylethylamine and it's an aphrodisiac. This is why kissing precedes sex. But you know, one of the things that it does to the female body that it doesn't necessarily do to the male body is lock us down and, and really give us blinders and sort of confuse us about the person in front of us and I really don't want to go through that confusion and if a man says well I need to kiss in order to know if there's a spark which is maybe what you're asking because some people will say that I need to kiss in order to know if if it's going if there's chemistry right so the response to that I would say is well I'm having this conversation with you because I feel that spark because I feel that chemistry and I want to see where it goes. And so, you know, I know culture says that we should be kissing on the first, second or third date, but 
take out your phone, flip forward three months, and you go, here's a date three months away from today. And if we still want to kiss on that date, then we would have that kiss. I just want to make sure before I kiss somebody that the spark that I feel right now is going to grow. Because if it grows between now and three months, it's just going to get better beyond three months once we start kissing too. Kind of hard to argue with that. <laughs> and that's, you know, this is why I give scripts. Um, you know, I, I, I don't just, I don't just give you information. I give you what you should say so that someone really understands you. And I love, love, love plain English. And here's the thing about human behavior. We can generalize it. There's always exceptions to the rule, but because we can generalize human behavior, male behavior, adult behavior, child behavior, then these conversations work on the type of person that you're looking for. Now for you, Chris, this would work because from what I've gathered about you, you are a generous long-term thinker. That's how I define men. Guys are selfish short-term thinkers. This conversation will turn them off. And that's perfect because if you're looking for a relationship, those are the ones that you want to see walk away. Yeah, and that goes back to what I mentioned earlier about maintaining frame. So with Robin's question, it's important for her to maintain her frame. And, and the response that you gave to that need for spark is the perfect example of maintaining frame, right? What someone's trying to do is sort of pull you out of your frame and say, well, I need to feel that spark. So we have to kiss. They're just trying to pull you out of that frame. So absolutely call their bluff on it and maintain frame. I love you. Oh my God, Chris, you're amazing. Are you coming? You're to not too bad dating? yourself. Are you coming to speed dating, by the way? Are you going to come to one of our speed dating events? I plan to one of these nights. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Uh, anything else you want to add? No, I just think uh, it, you always go back to the idea of what I mentioned before. Just go back to that idea of delayed gratification and how it works everywhere else in life. The most successful people have learned from an early age to delay gratification. And the good news is it's never too late to start that. So if you were the kind of person before who wanted instant gratification, so you spent all your money, um, you jump into relationships too soon, um, you're just always looking for that instant gratification, it's never too late to learn, right? Yeah. Ideally, the, they say the best time to do something is 20 years ago, the second best time is today. So you can start practicing those habits in every aspect of your life, including dating. And I absolutely would. The delayed gratification is always, always, always going to serve you better in life. That's a perfect point. That is the absolute perfect point to end on. I'm, I'm going to leave it with that, Chris. I think you said it best, 100%. Um, guys, I want to thank everyone for watching. I want to thank everyone who's going to be listening to this on the podcast. I especially want to thank you, Chris. You have been so awesome, so absolutely awesome. I truly, truly appreciate you. And I'm very happy to have you on my radar because I'm watching for the woman for a man like you. Well, that's great to know. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. 100%. And guys, everybody, I love you so much. Again, I welcome your comments. Share this if you think it's going to help somebody else out. And Stay tuned because there's a lot more information coming your way. And if you want to backtrack and touch on um, the information that I've already put out there, you can catch it on my YouTube channel, on my uh, blog, on canadasdatingcoach.com. And uh, what else do I have? I have Instagram, I have Pinterest, and I have a podcast. So whatever you want, if you can't find it, let me know, and I'll send you the link. So thank you again, everybody. And I have, I hope you have the most incredible day. Bye, Chris. Bye, Chantel.